Hey Matt, today I'm gonna show you some table saw tips and tricks you may not have ever seen before. Let's go. So I got this piece of plywood that's gonna be my false fence. It's gonna be a part of the jig we're making. We got the part that we're gonna be cutting and it doesn't matter what shape it is if you're cutting all rectangles or something like this home plate. We're making some type of home plate decoration, the ball storage or the ball display, anything like that. You're gonna be making multiples of these. So long as all the cuts are at an angle and not round, this jig will work perfect for that. So to make this, we're gonna take just a standard two by four and rip both edges off so that I got two flat sides. We'll lay it on the table saw. We got our fence up there and whatever size part you're gonna be cutting, in my case, half inch, we're gonna lay that up there. And then we've got a common two by four that we just ripped on the table saw. We're gonna lay that up there and make a mark. From the bottom, which we'll be laying on our table up, is two and three quarters of an inch. We're gonna add a quarter and then we're gonna rip this at three inches. Now this piece I've routed some dovetail grooves because I'm gonna use match fit clamps to attach to the fence. You can use uh, fence clamps or whatever you got. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of wood glue and attach this two by four to this piece of plywood, make sure it's flush across the top. Then I'm just gonna drill a couple of pilot holes and drive some screws in just to hold it so I can get to work. Next thing we're gonna do is attach that new jig to the table saw fence. As you can see here, it works great. It's held up off of the blade, off the table. This should work out right. Now I'm just taking some double stick tape and taping my pattern to the piece that I want to cut. I did cut this oversized at about an eighth inch all the way around so that we give it enough for the pattern to ride on and give some material to cut off. So now we're ready to cut the pattern almost. So what we got to do is align this blade with the front edge or the left side of your two before that's on top. I'm just going to take this board because I know that it's square on this side. And so I'm just going to line this up with the teeth, make sure it touches one of those teeth, move it over just till it kisses your pattern. You can also use a square here if you wanted to. Once it's perfectly lined up, these two faces are lined up, go ahead and lock your fence in. The next thing you wanna do is set the depth of your blade because you don't want your blade cutting your pattern off. You want it to cut through your stock, but not too much into your pattern. You want it to just, just kiss it. That should be good there. Now we're ready to cut our pattern. Now all you have to do is push it against your new fence, which is the two before, and then run the pattern. It's gonna follow the top piece because that's how you have it set. Now on bigger pieces, you wanna to try to get this pattern or the stock you're cutting to be slightly oversized than your pattern. If you have big pieces, they're underneath this fence and you have to turn your saw on and remove that piece. If you're only taking off an eighth or a quarter, then you don't really have to worry about those pieces too much because they're not gonna affect anything. What you don't wanna do is have a piece wide enough that'll get trapped between the blade and the fence. If that happens, you're gonna get a kickback there. So be cautious of that. And that's why it's always best to get these pieces as close to this pattern as possible, about an eighth or a quarter inch oversized. And then from there, you just unstick your pattern. Once you have this set, all you have to do is tape this pattern on again to the next part and repeat this over and over and over again. It'll help you batch out products like the speed you've never seen before. Because you do not have to touch this fence once it's set. Simple. One thing you would want to do after several cuts is to move this back and remove any loose pieces that may or may not be under there. Just a couple of safety points to note when you're doing this. Make sure you're using a push block because you don't want your hands down here should anything go wrong. See, blade, fingers, not good. Nice push block will push all the way through. Make sure you're pushing down toward the table and against this two before or whatever you're referencing at the top. So you're putting pressure basically kind of at an angle there as you push through the cut and don't turn this in any way. Even if you're turning it, it's just gonna come away and it's not gonna follow your pattern. It's not gonna get into the blade or shouldn't because you've got this top piece that's riding against this. I think this method works beautifully, especially on parts and pieces that are a little odd shaped like this home plate because there's several angles. If you're doing that on the miter saw, you're gonna be moving it back and forth to get everything just right. And then you have to worry about, are they all gonna be exactly the same? And if you're batching things out, especially putting shelves and things like that on them, you want them all to be exactly the same so that you don't have any corrections to make. I don't think many people would use it on a square or a rectangle piece like this, unless you're making something very specific and you want everything to match exactly like a box, something like that. But it could be handy if you don't have a router table and you just need to follow a pattern on the table saw. Before we get to number two, let me tell you about our website. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. All you have to do is go to 731bullworks.com slash store, check out all we have to offer. And if you use the code table saw tips, I'll give you 20% off any order. Go check it out. Most of us, when we check the square of our blade to the table, a lot of us will use something like this gauge here, which works good, but they're not extremely accurate. They're pretty good, 
they're not awesomely great. You know, it's just gonna get you close. It says it's 90. You know that what you're making requires it to be exactly square. I think these are within 0 0.01 or something like that of an error. A lot of us are also guilty of just taking a square and checking the blade. That works too. A better, more accurate way is just to take your throat plate off and check the square of the blade there. Make sure you're between the teeth. In other words, you're not landing on that tooth. That way you can look all the way down the blade. So long as your blade is flat, which it should be, you should get a better reading because then you get more of your square blade against the blade. And then that way you can actually see if there's anything out. You'll be able to see the light coming through if there's a discrepancy there. Tip number next, if you've used the table saw very long, you know it has to be set up properly to get the results you're after. In other words, the blade has to be square like we just checked, and the blade also has to be exactly parallel to the miter slot and the fence. Now, some people measure over with their tape measure. It's not really the best way. Take you a couple of rare earth magnets. In this case, these are just tiny ones. I get these on Amazon. I got them in the shop. Just take a digital caliper, make sure these are exactly the same. Both these are 0.1165. Just stick those on your blade. Take your rule and just stick it to those magnets. That's gonna get that rule off the teeth. It also gives you a bigger plane to measure from. That way you're not just measuring the blade, but you actually have 12 inches to measure. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can move the fence over and eyeball it if you just wanna get it fairly close, or you can take a caliper or measuring device at this point and measure off of your rule to your fence. If you're getting value out of this video, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video, which is twice a week. Don't miss any of them. Last but certainly not least, this is a piece of three quarter inch plywood. You can actually make a tapering jig or a jointing jig if you don't have a jointer. Now, I may have shown you in the past or you may have seen the video where I jointed with a table saw using a four foot level. That's certainly doable and I've done it a bunch. But this little jig will actually let you joint boards that are quite a bit longer and it doubles as a tapering jig. Let me show you. So you're just gonna take a piece of plywood Rough length, doesn't really matter. This one's about three foot long. You can make it a little longer if you wanted to. Next, what you're gonna do is cut some dovetail grooves in there. I am a huge fan of this match fit system. I use it all the time in the shop because it's so versatile. You can actually pick up a kit that includes two of these clamps and the dovetail bit fairly inexpensively. I have a whole video on how I made this and I'll link that right at the end of this video, but let me show you what it can do. This board does not have a straight edge. It's a rough cut edge. And you can see here on each end, there's a gap and I want to make that flat because I'm fixing to make a panel out of this. First thing you do is raise your blade up to make sure it's gonna clear all of this, put it in your jig and tighten down these little clamps. It doesn't have to be super tight, just snug. As far as adjusting the jig over, you're just gonna move it over until your jig just barely brushes it. You don't want it to cut your jig, just enough for it to go by and then this will overhang enough for it to be cut off. When you're cutting, you can actually use these as handles so you don't have to worry about your fingers being down there. Just pull it this way, put a little pressure towards your fence and move right through the cut. Now this board is perfectly straight. You can see I set it here on the tabletop and just flat, as flat as can be. Hold a rule against it, it's flat from each end. It's just a great way to joint boards if you don't have a jointer and you have a table saw. And because how versatile this is, you can just flip this around and now you've got a high fence, should you need that. And if you're gonna use this as a tapering jig, you can see I've marked a line that I'm going to taper. All you have to do is line the line up with the edge of your jig and then make that cut. And I've got a, a easy taper. I use this and my table saw sled more than any other jigs in the shop. This took a few minutes to make and it's just, super convenient to have in the shop. I would highly recommend picking one up, especially if you don't have a jointer. If you like this video, go check out the video where I made that jointing jig I was showing. Click that box right there. Clicking the box gets you a big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my favorite tips and tricks video right there.